Hi guys, welcome back. Today we are going to take a look at low power PWM and uh, low power PWM is based on the low power timer library and it's going to use some application timers uh, for generating the PWM waves. If you if you just want to change the brightness of LEDs or you want to do some simple task using the PWM, then this low power PWM is uh, the recommended way because uh, it does not use the hardware it just uses the application timers which uses the RTC and the uh, RTC is basically a low power timer so even if the device is sleeping this, these timers continue to work even if your device is in the sleep mode this uh, timer is going to be working continuously and it's going to generate the PWM waves on the specific pins okay guys let's uh, start programming it and let's see how we can use the PWM in low power so first of all open this PC go into the C directory here we have NRF SDK go into the examples and uh, here go into the peripheral copy the low power PWM and then go into my projects and paste it here and uh, open this project if you are using NRF52840 then open the PCA10056 if you are using NRF52832 then open the PCA10040 I'm using 52832 so I'm just gonna open this and uh, then go into the blank then go into the SES Sagar Embedded Studio and uh, open this EM project file once we open this file uh, I'm just gonna remove the code and we will start from the beginning okay it's done make sure uh, all of these uh, libraries are included because they are very important for this this low power PWM is uh, the main library that uh, is uh, just uh, simulating the PWM using the low power uh, timers and uh, of course uh, for the low power timers we have to use the application timers so a timer is also involved so make sure if you open the SDK config and go into the libraries you go and see the application timer is enabled and uh, it's good to go it's already enabled because it's uh, everything is set so we are just going to code it from here okay so the first thing is we have to initialize the clock because it is using the application timer so we need to initialize the clock uh, because we are not using the bluetooth so let's make a simple function for that okay so we have initialized the low frequency clock now we need to uh, start programming the PWM so first of all we have to define an LED uh, which is going to be used for that we have to make sure that we define the pin mask uh, a pin mask is basically the register uh, which holds the pin value so for that we have to give a pin mask uh, right now we are not going to add that first of all let's first of all let's create a simple struct We can add this as a global variable so that uh, we can use it in different functions. So the next thing is we also have to assign the duty value. The duty value is basically uh, an unsigned 8 integer value and we are going to change it in the function so I have uh, created a volatile variable because uh, this variable's value is going to be changed in the main function so it's uh, better to use the volatile variable now let's create a initialization function before that let's create a handler this PWM handler will be called when uh, the timer period is finished uh, then it can change the duty cycle or whatever we can perform different functions in this let's first initialize the PWM now we need to define a configuration 
which is going to hold all the configurations we can uh, use the default configurations as well but uh, let's uh, configure everything ourselves so that we know how the PWM is working so now we need to we also need to pass the application timer handle and uh, for that we know we already know the application timer has to be defined by a handle and uh, if you don't know about the application timer just uh, watch uh, my previous tutorial on application timers then come here so we will define the application timer by just simply passing this function uh, this uh, does not mean that uh, it's the application is using the timer zero it's basically using the low frequency RTC and the uh, as we know that we can generate we can make as many application timers as we want I'm defining it with this name and this is going to be the handle of the application timer let's configure the PWM configurations so for that this means the active high logic for the LED is uh, logic 0 so we set this as false so that whenever it gives the logic zero the LED turns on so according to that it's going to manipulate the PWM waves and uh, the next thing is and let's set the period to 100 100 ticks is the frequency of uh, this low power timer it's working at uh, 32.768 kilohertz so according to 31 microseconds or you can multiply 31 microseconds with 100 and you are going to get the total time period of the wave here we have to pass the bit mask of the pin and uh, we are just going to use already defined the bit mask for the led zero on the boat now we have to give it the timer ID and here we are going to use this and the last thing is we have to give it the port if you are using uh, NRF uh, 52840 then make sure you give it the proper port number and uh, in the case of NRF 52832 just use this constant now let's initialize the PWM pass it the handle and then pass it the configurations and last thing is we have to pass the interrupt handler and uh, the interrupt handler name is PWM handler and uh, now let's uh, set the initial duty for the PWM and we give it in the terms of unsigned 8 integer ticks here in this case we have 100 uh, tick time period let's set it to 20 for the initial state and and the last thing is we have to start the PWM okay the initialization is done and uh, let's say whenever this 100 uh, ticks period is finished then then this interrupt is uh, called and in this interrupt handler let's uh, update the duty cycle in the interrupt handler first of all just uh, let's not use this and let's see in the raw form like if we want to do it in the while loop and later we will see we can use uh, the interrupt handler to update the pwm duty now let's go into the main function initialize the clock initialize the timers and then in initialize the PWM call this PWM initialization function and and in this function let's say uh, I want to update the duty so for that and let's say the initial duty would be 
zero. Let's give some delay. And uh, let's give some different duty cycles to see the change in the brightness of the LED. Okay, the code is set and uh, good to go. We will uh, see the interrupts after the initial experiments. So first, let's see how this duty is working. Let's see how it's updating in the while loop. So let's build the program. Oops, I made a little mistake. Let's build it. Okay, once the code is built, make sure your device is connected. Uh, go to the target, click on the connect, then erase all and then download it. And let's see. So here you can see the LED uh, is increasing its brightness and then it's suddenly turning off because we are using this duty cycle here. So from it's starting from 0, 25, 50% and then 75 and then 100%. Now let's see how we can change the duty cycle in the interrupt. So whenever the interrupt is called after 100 ticks period so here you can see the p in the the pwm handler code was left empty and uh, now let's uh, write uh, the same function which is pwm set duty we will just copy this and paste it in this function and uh, let's say we are just going to pass this variable in this so okay so we will remove this code from here and we have called this uh, code and it's going to set this duty so let's uh, change this duty in the main function in the while loop you can use it uh, in any other function or in any other way I'm just going to show how this uh, PWM handler is working so for that let's just write a simple code here to change the duty to slow the increasing and decreasing brightness of the LED we can just change this delay and let's use the same function Now it's uh, just simply going to increment the duty cycle uh, in a steady manner and uh, then it's going to decrease it. So it's a simple function. So it's a simple way to show the LED's brightness change. So let's build this code. Oops, I made some mistake. Yes, we haven't uh, set any variable for that. Let's just use this because uh, it's inside the function so the function scope uh, these variables are local to the function so uh, it doesn't matter if I put the same name of this variable error code variable let's build it make sure your device is connected click on the connect erase all and download it and now you can see the LED's brightness is increasing and decreasing slowly it's uh, it's being accessed at the same time. Sometimes uh, this is going to be happening inside the controller that it's uh, this variable is going to be accessed at the same time. So this uh, volatile is really important. If you don't put this, it's not going to work. So make sure it's a volatile variable. And uh, let's uh, say if we want to use any other pin for that. Let's say if we want to use Let's say if we want to use any other pin and uh, for that we have a simple function to give a name to the pin. So let's say external LED and for that we have a function which is called pin mask and here you mention the pin number like pin number 22 so here we are going to connect the pin number 22 and uh, instead of using uh, this uh, uh, internal LED we are going to use an external LED 
and for that our logic high value turns on the LED so here we will set in this active high as true and uh, we will change this mask to EX external LED and everything is good to go and everything is set let's build this again and let's connect an external LED make sure your device is connected target click on the connector erase all and then download it and here you can see this time I have connected an external LED and it's working and uh, I have uh, changed the code for the internal LED so internal LED is not working now because uh, I have mentioned this uh, pins bit mask uh, now the PWM is being uh, simulated on this pin so it's really useful I hope so you have learned something new today if you are new to my channel please be sure to subscribe to my channel if you have any questions you can ask me in the comments below and uh, soon I'm going to create a patreon so make sure you guys support my work so I put a lot of effort on making these tutorials and I will continue making more great tutorials and uh, and uh, thank you very much for watching see you in the next video